this is John with the Evolving World. Today I'm doing a quick video on the Saunders Step e-bike. This is an owner's review. As is such, I'm going to be getting into a lot of extensive details about the, the bike design and about the um, my experiences riding it on different surfaces. I've taken it to the beach, I've taken it to uh, different trails, different roads, all kinds of different conditions. So it's going to be pretty lengthy, pretty uh, detailed review. I do want to mention one thing. I did relocate the throttle from the right side to the left side. I found that that was a better position for me. So you might notice that that's different if you have one of these bikes yourself or if you've seen pictures of one. Other than that, it's 100% stock. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, first I want to go over how to operate it. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So the first thing you want to do is you want to turn it on right here. That activates the battery. The battery is actually located in the, in the frame here. There's a long battery right here. I'll show that to you later. And then you want to come up here and you want to hit I on your controls. Like that. And then the display comes on. And um, that's pretty much it. At that point, you're pretty much good to go. It, you automatically default to two, and that's how much assist that you want, how much electric assist you want. And you can control that with the plus and the minus. So if you go down to zero, for example, that means that there's no assist whatsoever. So it's just a conventional bike at that point. The electric motor is not doing anything. The display is on, but there's no assist whatsoever. So if you hit the throttle, nothing happens. But as soon as you go up to one, anything above one, you hit the throttle and you'll, you'll you know, the bike will move. So it goes up from one to three, four, and five. And that, basically that's just how much, how much electric assist that you want. And um, on this side, we have the actual mechanical uh, shifting mechanism here. So it's just a, it's a Shimano Revo Sport, or Revo Shift, seven speed, sorry. <laughs> so it um, works pretty good. Um, seven speeds, it's all mechanical. So it's like just a conventional bike. You just don't have those extra those extra cogs over here. Those have been eliminated, so you just have the seven speeds right here. One little tidbit of information that some people might find interesting is that although it does say Saunders on the display, and it does say Saunders down here on the hub motor, it's actually made by a company called Bafang. You can see right here. Let's zoom into that if I can get to it. And they actually supply a lot of uh, powertrains for a lot of bikes. And in fact, if you wanted to, if you have a bike that you really like that you want to convert to electric, they actually sell a kit that has this hub motor and it has the exact same display. And that's how I found out about it, actually, because I was looking into that at one point. And so like on Amazon or eBay, if you just if you just type in Bafang and then like uh, e-bike powertrain or, or something like that, you'll be able to find something that looks exactly like this. And that's that's exactly how... I found out about it so the only thing about doing that it may seem like a good idea but the only thing is is that for 400 bucks and then you have to factor in the labor of taking a bike and converting it over so one thing I like about this bike is I like the design of it I like how good it looks I like how they integrated the battery pack into the frame I think that's a really big plus and I think it's it makes it look so nice and clean like it like it looks like it's intended to you know, unlike a lot of the competition bikes, which they look like tacky, it's almost like they take a regular e-bike or a regular bike and they decide we're going to make it into an electric now. So we're going to tack on a big old black plastic case for the battery and then, you know, put a hub motor on it and say, OK, now it's an e-bike. Right. And to me, that just doesn't work. I mean, I might have worked five years ago, but I mean, now I think if you really want to make an e-bike properly, it should have the battery pack integrated into the frame, and that's what they've done here. So I definitely like that a lot. Another interesting design feature I like is right here, this horizontal member that goes across right here, whether it's there for structural reinforcement or if it's there to be used as a handle. When you do use it, when you do need to lift up the bike, and when you actually put your hand right towards the front of this handle, or structural member, you can lift it up and guess what happens? Both wheels lift equally. So we have pretty much a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. 
And so that's a nice little touch, I think. One thing I really like about this bike is how it's so comfortable to ride. It's, it's actually very fun to just get on it and go for a ride. Like there's no special preparation or anything. It's not like some skinny tire racing bike. You don't feel like you have to put on spandex and, and uh, you know, you're racing a tire, your jerseys and all that stuff, which I've never been a big fan of. Um, you don't feel like, I mean, this is just not that kind of bike. This is like more of a comfortable kind of bike. You just get on it with regular clothes and just go out and ride it. And like, it's ergonomically friendly. It's, it's a comfortable riding bike. And it's just, it's just fun. Like it's, so like, you know, everything about it is more comfort oriented. Like, so like the seat, I mean, there's probably no such thing as a comfortable bicycle seat, but this one seems to be more on that side, at least as far as they can go. And then the hand grips are comfortable and just like the nice shape. And they're just like, you don't feel like I need to have riding gloves on or nothing. It just feels like you can just get on it and go. And like the way that the handlebars are spaced out, the distance. The whole riding position is in general is just more upright. And so it's just more comfortable to get in and ride. And these big fat tires do a really good job of absorbing bumps and everything. So along with the front shock absorbers, the comfortable grips, the comfortable seat, and the comfortable... Uh, back tire here now there's no rear suspension which would be an improvement if they had that but I, st I find that it's not too bad like I don't miss it as much as I thought I would so one thing about this bike that I really like it's a plus and a minus at the same time is that these these 28 inch wheels actually officially they're 27 and a half by 3 inch uh, wheel and tire but the actual I actually took a measuring tape to it the actual uh, finish is actually from outside a tire to outside a tire is actually 28 inches and then the actual width of it is actually 2.75 inches so a little bit less than three and then as far as the uh, the tire depth it's about two and a half inches from from the top here to the to the metal rim so however they come up with these numbers I don't know I mean that's the nominal number but that's the actual number right there so it's about 28 28 inches diameter so the plus of that is it makes for a nice smooth ride. You can go over stuff. You can hit, you know, sticks and rocks and stuff. And it's like nothing's going to make you, uh, you know, nothing's going to stop the tire and, you know, turn you over or anything. It's like you don't have any, any chance of hitting even like a curb. I and mean, you could probably hit a curb full on and this wheel will just roll right over it because it's just so big. But the downside is, is that this thing's six foot one now, which is pretty long and, uh, it's pretty bulky, especially when it comes to transportation. So that's the downside, which I'm going to show you that when we fold it a little bit later. So here's how to replace the battery pack if you should ever need to do so. Some people might be tempted to carry an extra pack along with you, and that might be helpful for certain occasions. But uh, anyway, it's not exactly super easy to do. So you take your, your key that comes with the bike, you stick it in here, turn 180 degrees, and then out it slides. Okay, so here's the battery pack out of the bike. It actually weighs five pounds. I just weighed it, almost exactly. And I just found out something interesting here while looking at this. Now, according to the website, it's supposed to have Panasonic cells and it's supposed to be a 10.4 amp hour capacity pack. But if you look at this a little closer, you can see that this is actually um, Samsung cells and it's 10.5 amp hours. So, is that a concern? No, I would say not at all. Samsung cells, LG cells, and Panasonic, those are all top quality cells. So I wouldn't be concerned about that whatsoever. And it looks like we get an extra 0.1 amp hour of capacity. So can't complain about that, I guess. But this, but it's, I just thought that was a little interesting. This would not be the first time that they've showed something different than what actually is. And um, as far as the actual cell, I'm also going to just take a wild guess and assume that this is, uh, this is an 18650, but I'm, I'm going to take a guess and assume that, that, that that's probably what's in here. There's probably 10 of them in series to get your voltage, because these are about 3.6 volts each, so times 10, that would get you your 36 volts. And then maybe there's another 10 in there in parallel to get your, uh, your capacity. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to fold it up and put it in a vehicle. So the first thing you want to do is get some padding I'm actually reusing padding that came with that the bike shipped with actually 
is what I'm using here. But if you can get some other kind of padding, you want to protect this area here because what's going to happen is when we fold it, as you can see, there's already paint damage from before I realized that it was hitting there. So you want to protect your frame, unless you don't care about that, then you're going to get a bunch of scratches here on the paint job. But if you want to protect the paint, definitely put some padding on it. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to fold up your pedals. And the folding part is easy, but the uh, sticking it in a, in a car is a little bit more difficult. So you want to make sure that this is always going to get in the way. So you always have to be aware where this, this, this thing is at. The, the crank here and the uh, pedals are always seem to get in the way. So then the next thing you want to do is take that apart like that. And then there's some really good places to grab it. There's a place right here. Another place right here seems to be the best place. You can just kind of grab it, kind of pivot with your body here and kind of maneuver it around, such as so. And there's a little stand on the bottom here for it to rest on. You can see that our contact padding is protecting that area. And so it has a little stand for it to rest on, so that's good. So once again, our pedal got in the way here. And so that's, that's that step. So it's pretty easy to get it to that level. But now it gets a little tricky when you're putting it in a vehicle, unless you have a really big vehicle. And that's the one thing I don't like about this bike that really stands out to me is I like the fact that it folds, but it doesn't fold enough. These big wheels and tires kind of keep the package pretty big here and the handlebars stick out enormously. So you got a three foot six wide, it's about four feet tall here, even when it's folded. So it's still a pretty big package. It weighs about 55 pounds, as I mentioned before, which is not that heavy, but just the bulk of it. So what I find is that grabbing it, the lower section of the bike, because this thing is gonna, if you buy the upper section, it's gonna, you know, just come apart again. So you wanna buy, grab the lower part here, right about the forks or so. And then um, right here, the center section is a good spot to grab it. And then you just pivot it up. On this particular car, I find that if you rest it right here on the edge and then just pivot around on this, on that side right there, pivots in, goes in relatively easy once you practice. And then you can kind of just, uh, protect your interior during transport but that's pretty much it right there so no damage to the bike no damage to the car that's the way we want it press it in here and that's pretty much good to go I'm going to show you how to remove it from a vehicle and put it back together once again the hardest part is getting it out of the vehicle if you have a flat bed like a minivan or something it would probably be real easy actually but because we have a little bit of a curb here or if you had a pickup i mean a pickup truck would make it real easy because it would be a, yeah i mean you wouldn't have to <laughs> be a piece of cake but because we have a little lip right here you have to be extremely careful to protect your back when lifting this out of here so i find that if i squat down a lot kind of get down here and lean up against put all the weight on the towards the car here definitely want to protect our back here that's the most important thing so kind of slide it over once again with basically reverse of how we put it in so in this particular car resting it right here and then kind of twirling it around using that as a pivot point seems to work pretty good just grabbing the same spots as we did before should be able to lift it up Here we go. And it kind of just pivots out like that. And there we go. Lift it down like so. All right. And then the rest is easy. All we have to do, once again, make sure that that pedal is out of the way. Always seems to get in the way. Make sure this latch is out of the way too. Because we'll catch on that. 
and basically use the same grab spots as before bring it around slap it on there and there you go ready to go this is what excel is best at hard pack kind of gravel road gravel trails it's a nice smooth ride the big tires absorb any kind of bumps you hit so if you hit a twig or a stick or a pothole it doesn't really matter too much a lot of times i just ride a one just having a little bit of assist helps out a lot uh, this this uh, one thing I do not like is this gauge right here. So I, I was 13.6 miles in and it only dropped the bar, which is not proportional to the actual battery pack. Okay, we're at 20 miles right now. And it still shows four bars. And you know that's grossly inaccurate. It's probably like, uh, should be showing two and a half. I have been riding on one and two primarily with a couple bursts going up hills, like I'll do the full. But anyway, let's go ahead and turn around. One of the nicest things about riding a bike is that you get to go places you can't go by by car. On a beautiful autumn day, nothing like a nice peaceful bike ride. Okay, so let's hope we can make it back. We're at 20.1, just turned around. a little bit more power to it kind of adjust it to your taste or you just say to hell with it and just hit the throttle but it is an e-bike you really do have to ride it it's nice though going around those corners like that you just keep your momentum going but it is a bike. I'm actually on speed one, so I'm at the lowest gear, so it's a pretty steep hill we're going up here. This is where it really is nice having an e-bike. throttle here. And up we go. Yeah, that would have been a die burner back there but not with the e-bike okay 30.9 miles well going up the steep hill I was full throttling and it dropped from two bars to one flashing this is what happens every time so does that mean I'm at 5% or 10% what does that mean
own home. 38.3 miles for this journey. Battery's completely dead. When it's flashing one, I never know if that's 20% or if it's 1%. So I've always kind of managed to come back with a little bit of a charge. And so this time we ran it totally flat. So uh, that's going to be very beneficial here because now I want to show you how to charge it and how long it takes to do it. So got our timer here. Got a kilowatt right here. So I'll show you what, all the, the numbers. So it's very simple. You just move this out of the way right here. Plug this thing in like that. And uh, the light turns from green to red, which is kind of opposite from what a lot of other people do it, but that's, that's the way they do it. And so it doesn't really um, do anything here. It doesn't let you know that, it, that it's charging. And the only thing that really lets you know is this right here. Oh, actually, we want to get this going too. So our stopwatch going. And then this is the charge rate right here. So right up, I don't know if you can see that, 118. Uh, volts. So we're at here. Amps is 1.01. .01. Looks like 1.0. Kind of varying somewhere in that range. And then 74.7 watts. Actually, almost 75. We're about one hour and three minutes in on the charge. And the wattage has gone up to 78. Oh, I'm sorry about that again. About 78 watts. Amps 1.08, voltage is still at about 118, and we have three bars showing. And so that would look like, you know, just based off the fact it was zero and now it's up to three bars out of five, you would think that it's probably over 50% charged, right? Has to be. But no, not really. Due to this really uh, inaccurate, poor display here of state of charge, we're coming up on about two hours right now. I just want to show you the status. So we're at 118.4, exact same as it was from the start. Amps is up to 1.12. The wattage is up to 80, almost 80, well, 81, 81 watts right now. So it's ramped up, so it's actually gotten faster. And um, we're still at, okay, so we're at four bars now. So it took one hour to come up to three bars. It took a whole nother hour to move from three to four bars. Just under two and a half hours. And we now have five bars. So to me, that would indicate that it's pretty close to being fully charged, right? We are at um, 118 still here. 1.15. 82.4. So it's actually ramped up even further as far as the charging rate. It's actually charging faster. So it's not tapering off. It's actually charging faster now. So that's a little bit of a hint of what's really happening here. We're just over four hours now. Still at five bars, of course. Let's see how our voltage is doing here. So we're at 118.1. Back up. Amp is 1.14. The watt is 81, so it's still, or 82, 82 I guess. So it's still charging rapidly. Five hours, it's continuing to taper down, but we still have a little ways to go. I think we're getting really, really close. 0.34 amps, under 24 watts, so it's running at about quarter speed here. So it's gotta be really close to wrapping up here. So, uh, any minute now, um, this would be a, generally it's a good time when it starts to taper down, when it was like, like, you know, 15 minutes ago, that would have been a good time to unplug it because it's like 95%. It's going to take a while to finish up that last 5%. All right. So how does it do on the beach? riding a little bit so I can tell you it's actually quite fun what's nice about it is you get to go places you can't walk to I mean you could drive a car but that's no fun that's too easy so you may be asking well why 
even bother to ride it on the beach, especially on a 55 degree day. Well, for one thing, you get to go a lot farther. You get to go places that maybe you couldn't walk. Now, this particular beach uh, has cars on it, so probably not going any place that nobody else has gone, but there are further sections up the road here where even the cars may not be going. We may be able to go, so that's a cool little incentive. Of course, the downside is the range ain't all that good. I think you probably get about 50% your range, maybe a little bit less depending on how much assist you use. So this would be a whole lot more fun than riding a regular bike because you have the electric assist so it makes up for all the extra resistance that you're getting from the sand and when you get in like a little bit of a deep sand area you just hit the throttle and power right out so it's not even a problem so you never really get stuck only thing you gotta watch out for is like seashells and stuff like that it might be kind of a little sharp like that right there On the hardback areas, you can go almost as fast as driving on gravel. Routine. Okay, we're at about 17.3 miles. Parking area is just over there. I think we're down to probably about 5% or so. So I would say that's pretty safe. 100% on the beach. At speeds between two and three sometimes as low as one on the gear and then and three on the speeds here show you one of the other features this has it has the uh, walk feature right here you push your thumb down and hold it it will start moving on its own at about walking speed so it's good if you want to go up a hill that's kind of handy so my final thoughts are it's a good solid affordable e-bike I wish that they would address a couple of those issues that I mentioned. If they did that, it would be make it even better. But even considering those those flaws, I still think for $975, you're not going to find much out there that's a whole lot better. I mean, you might be able to find some cheaper stuff that's going to be, you know, less. And you can definitely spend three grand or four grand, and you might get a significantly lighter bike, which would be nice. But you know, you're going to pay for it. You know in in the cost also you could easily spend three or four grand and get a bike that's maybe not even as good as this one as i've actually tested a couple so um yeah all things considered for 975 bucks i think it's a solid buy so i definitely like it and that's how it's going to do it for this review of a saunders step e-bike hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like and subscribe many more videos to come